Welcome to the Zeph Report. We had some problem with our transmission, but I think we can get through now. Won't you grab a little bean bag and pull on up to the loudspeaker? We might have something for you, you specifically, today. Today? I guess that means today. G- greetings, the name of the Most High. Uh, I don't know. You know, I don't take drugs. Okay? But that definitely was like something I would have done on... <laughs> zoned out of my mind. But anyway, that's good. That's good. Starting to access those areas that used to take drugs to access. I'm just now doing it naturally. I uh, just started here, so... Uh, any, no, no, I just started, uh, we've been, it's been quiet until j- just now when I start talking, that's, I guess, like, like a cue. Okay, so, um, you know, we had a kind of an intense, uh, you know, sort of very quick talking, you know, Rigo trying to get everything in, trying to kind of encapsulate his experience yesterday, and, um, what I really liked about it was because he's 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 literally it's it's so fresh, you know what I mean? It's like it's right now, right? And and so it's uh, he he's he's jamming in there, uh, you know, whether he knows it or not. Uh, everything that we've been saying here from day one, and trying desperately to get the gang stalking uh, people, TIs, whatever, to understand, and it's just been like pulling teeth and I, I maybe he will help in that, in this regard because he proved you know pretty much everything we say the roots of all of this really go to witchcraft <clears throat> that's where it actually begins and if you look at the things and we're going to look today at you know specific he mentioned some specific spells I'm familiar with everything that he talked about unfortunately uh, having been targeted uh by those same kind of witches that do those same things with pictures and taking the eyes out and babies and 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 uh you know uh breeders and and uh you know big covens and i I wrote a book glass backwards which kind of just in in a in a you know it's it's a satire but it's basically uh has all that in it of uh the certain element in la that he's talking about which is he was talking about he said poor Mexicans and everything, but it's not. These are generational uh, witches, mainly involved in Santeria, but they're very, very powerful, and they run the city. I, people don't seem to understand that. Uh, they run Hollywood, the maids. Um, and they uh, people that are not, you know, persona non grata get wind up, you know, dead because they have many, many ways of assassinating any target. Many ways, but the, what what you get is the the targeting, your mind ruined, scrambled. You know, just like you're being beamed with a psychotronic weapon. Only it, now, let's let's look at the witchcraft angle. You can't sleep, you can't eat, right? You're you're um, thinking about other things. You're you're, in, let's say, intensely triggered sexually. Let's say you can't get your mind off certain perversions or things, or 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 eating or doing things that are basically self destructive to you because you've been targeted. And you can't seem to get away from it. And you don't know who they are and how they're doing it. But you see, they're... And then, and then people coming up to you and seem, seemingly to talk about things that are in your head. People you've never seen before. And then people you, you'll maybe never see again or have no record of them ever having existed. And those kinds of things, you know, are, are what TIs report. Right? Uh, this has been going on, though, this kind of thing. Of course, for thousands of years, and and the 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 generational witches, it's not unusual to have this uh, this idea of um, having some big house and having a um, you know the fire chief and the and the lawyer and the uh, and the quote poor Mexicans and the um, <clears throat> and the whole and a whole panoply of people from seemingly from different walks of life, but all connected through this uh, ritual, through this uh, coven ritual, or just through these um, parties, uh, orgies, get-togethers, and so on and so forth. Then out in public, these same people 
all um, are surreptitious, but they are all, you know, at times targeting people and coming at them, saying all kinds of things, trying to get them fired, trying to get them, move them around, saying, coming out of the woodwork and saying things. They're just stalking them. And uh, it, it's, it's part and parcel of the same group that gets together that has nothing in common with each other, but it represents the entire system of humanity. All these people are in the hierarchy, and they're all controlled by the witches who run things. And so when they target you, they have to target you, because if they don't target you, they get targeted themselves. So it's a kind of a self-policing situation. Uh, many people have written about this in different ways. Uh, the main thing is, you know, he talked about how he was uh, set up to uh, impregnate a, a woman and then after that not needed and then set up for death and having many professional hit jobs, just something go awry and he didn't arrive at that place at the time they were there or whatever they were going to get him. Uh, this I can say that with, you know, this is, this is typical. This has uh, been, you know, my life, certainly other people I know, uh, where God has protected them, uh, you know, hundreds of times of um, death uh, death meetings, hundreds, somehow mysteriously averted, hundreds, thousands, and um, <clears throat> and uh, you know, and the, but but the targeting goes on, and it's 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 all you know being brewed up. <laughs> Good thing to say when you say witches, brewed up. Uh, by just a few people that are uh, controlling everyone. And if there happens to be somebody with, you know, uh, in the military industrial complex, uh, psychotronic weapons, all that, they're in the same club, they're in the same group of, non of people that are there, then they're not there, then they really are them, but they aren't them, you know, that it's very difficult to say. And then you see them later, they have different names, and they're like the police chief, and the very, you know, and there they are again, Rosemary's baby, okay? Uh, and here they are um, using advanced uh, technology to 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 do their witchcraft. And I, I today I was just determined that I'm going to teach you this so that you understand, because I'm seeing lots of I'm still seeing a tremendous amount of ignorance and 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 people that just don't know what they are up against. And uh, I'm, and I'm convinced at this point there needs to be almost uh, it'd be hard to teach a class on all this, but I mean I think you've got to go back and re-listen to Rigo's uh, testimony because there's a lot of gems in there, a lot of just just things that are just that basically as time goes on you wouldn't mention those kind of details because you'd be getting away from them in time, like me, you know, as I've gotten away from them in time, <clears throat> but they're fresh to him talking about when he was in the foster care system, and obviously they, that's where he was uh, targeted and uh, has been targeted for life, which is uh, what he said at the very beginning. And um, the foster care system connected to a church, connected to, uh, you know, and all of that. Of course, they're all connected to churches. All these witches are connected to churches too. And so, and, you know, and so he's finding, you know, he's getting manipulated and he's thinks he's getting into one thing with a girlfriend or something. A woman brings out tarot cards, a very, not tarot cards, but cards. And the very thing that the woman lays out for him, uh, in the cards, i.e. witchcraft, uh, ends up happening exactly, including a guy that gets him out of jail. Okay. You know, to, to, to the letter of, of what was, uh, predicted showing a great deal of control over the environment, over the situation. Now, all of these people, uh, you know, take their orders from Central Command, and uh, they all are doing their part. She didn't need cards that had pictures on them because it didn't matter what the card said. It doesn't matter because, see, the plan is the plan, and the plan for this guy was exactly what happened. So she's just going over the plan as it is. At the same time, we saw a uh, you know mirror filled with these pictures of old boyfriends, but these are boys like 15, 16, 17 now, and there's a whole bunch of them. And so one wonders what happened to them. Some of them apparently are alive, but then some, you know, there's just, you don't know what happened. So obviously, you see, you've stumbled into a, a death cult. But that death cult is worldwide, involving all governments and all people everywhere. And 
when they're taken over to come at you or do whatever they're going to do, they're taken over by a higher intelligence, by a higher intelligence. And that intelligence um, is basically, you know, you call it the all-seeing eye if you like, but it's basically, you know, the matrix grid for the entire world. And it's basically targets uh, anyone that for whatever reason, whatever reason, it doesn't matter what reason, you are more. You're, you're morally against the world system. You're you're not morally against it. You're um, you have the wrong blood type. You you know that's on your medical record. They see that, and then it's just an ongoing situation, an ongoing fight. In this case, Rigo thought that he was fighting the whole world. He saw that it was really it was endless. It was endless. How how many manifestations? I mean, it's just like every other person. And then the next thing you know, he doesn't know that person anymore. They're acting like someone he's never seen before in his life. And then, and then maybe they are okay, but then they uh, suddenly they're like, you know, they they look at this uh, discrepancy in the Bible. The old bottles, you can't pour new wine into old bottles. And of course, we all laugh at that at that one. That's all coming from witchcraft too. CERN is coming from witchcraft. D waves are coming from witchcraft. It's all the same. Once you understand that. Once you understand that the real advanced technology is the witchcraft and not so much the uh, electronic manifestations or machines, then you start, you start to, you're starting to get it now. You're starting to understand. And you finally, you must understand that the only reason you're alive, if you're, um, you know, one of the people that is targeted, you're only alive because God kept you alive. It's through really no, no virtue of your own, maybe no fault of your own, but God kept you alive knowing you, you know, before you really woke up to understand that something's happening to you. And you don't know what it is, do you, Mr. Jones? Oh, wow, I just leapt into a Bob Dylan song. I wonder what he was talking about. As the whole crowd nods and winks, yeah, baby, shut up, shut up. You have no say here. You've had all your jokes. You've had your fun. Now go F yourselves. Bottom line is, they mock people that are lower in the hierarchy or just slaves, and they mock, of course, any of the unwashed masses who are just there to be used, abused, and tossed out. The witches, the hierarchy of this this witchcraft goes to the very top, the top people in the world are all completely controlled by it, and um, the and 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 to the lowest people in the world, who are completely controlled by it. It doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, you know, whether you're an elite bloodline or not. Is it, in fact, n- none of that actually matters. The bottom line is there's another world that is connected to this one where there is extremely advanced technology that tracks every human on earth, every breath, every breath you... T- I said, get out of here. You've had your songs. You've had your fun. You think this is all one big funny ha-ha joke. All right? Shoot, I, you know, I miss my calling. I need to go back to when I'm like, you know... 13, 14, start training in the gym, boxing. And I, I want to take every one of these MRFers on. I mean, I'll do it with one hand tied behind my back. You know, I'll do, I'll do two of them at once. How's that? Not afraid to mix it up over here, okay? <laughs> so you can imagine there's a whole bunch of uh, interference going through my head right now and, and just whirling around. <laughs> <laughs> and, and probably around here, nothing's broken yet. The speakers are working. The you know the, everything seems to be in working order. Thank you, Lord. Um, but you know that's another aspect of witchcraft. Things break, machines break, uh, telecommunications goes down. You know th- this is all you know witchcraft interference. We've had it so many times. It's not even funny, but it, it goes without saying that that's also part of the the situation. Every single person that is on the path of the Lord is, is 
targeted. You know, you have to understand that. Or the Bible calls it persecution. It's the same thing. And, you know, they're, they, they, it's low tech and it's high tech. It's high tech in the sense that the, the seemingly people that don't know each other, big, big feature of Rigo's testimony, people that don't know each other at all, suddenly working together in a hive like, a hive mind psychic link and saying things that only he or only I or only you would know about yourself or what, what you've just been through or what you were thinking or whatever. Kind of like the ads that pop up on uh, Facebook. Okay, the reason it's important to understand where all this comes from is so that you can do research, you know, uh, spiritual research too. I mean, the Bible is a great source and research, of course, into witchcraft and the history of it. And, uh, you know, and, but a lot of that, that history, of course, is not really spelling out how powerful it really is. Um, like I said, you know, Hollywood is run by, you know, everything is run in L.A. by the maids. Who are all uh, multi generational Santeria witches, and yes, they're all Hispanic for whatever reason. They're all from Mexico. Maybe not all. Some, I mean, they're but they're very much the Latin thing. This is a problem in Mexico as well. You, you have all the dignitaries and the president and everybody else also controlled by witchcraft, and then you've got the UN controlled by witchcraft. Then you've got you know Transylvanian witches, and you know it, it's not they're not all Hispanics, but I mean if you're dealing with LA and Southern California, you're going to deal with 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 that. You know people that um, that that have the Bible that have crosses in their cars that go to church on you know they're very heavily involved in the Catholic Church. And, you know, in many cases, they're very heavily involved with the families that, uh, that rule the world in terms of media or the, or the corporatocracy, and they don't realize it, but slowly and insidiously, they get control of these families. And by getting control of the families, uh, they eventually get control of the, uh, the people and uh, enslave them, okay? Once you're enslaved, it's like an initiation point, then you're kind of in the club. You have to, you know, you, you sort of dance to the tune when the tune comes along. If you can't be hypnotized, you can't be enslaved, you can't be taken in that way, you can't be taken over that line, then they usually target you. And then if you survive very well, as Rigo was pointing out, if you survive all these professional hits, then they think, well, maybe we should recruit you because you've got, obviously got talent. And so, but, but it's a worldwide phenomenon involving every person on earth. Every single person that's born is part of this situation. Okay, so for the targeted community that keeps going over and over it about, you know, getting, you know, I, I went through some, some research uh, about, um, you know, electronic attacks and, you know, rape attacks, uh, you know, microwave attacks, uh, you know, burning people, you know, uh, voice to skull, all these things. This is all just part and parcel of the same thing. And it's also interdimensional. It also has its roots in another world, not this one. That's the most, most important thing. All of this doesn't come from this world. It does not come from the natural world. Okay? That's why you had a connection in this testimony, which was very raw and unedited, and we didn't editorialize yesterday. I wanted to wait one day to make my comments about it. You had a connection between witchcraft, which is the whole root of Rigo's testimony, to... Um, to what I would call, you know, targeting, but it's, it's the witchcraft type of targeting, but it's the same thing. To someone that doesn't know, it would be targeting. And then the connection with the Mandela effect, and then from the Mandela effect to just general, being a, a general targeted individual after that. So you have this line going from foster care and thinking that he's been targeted since he was a child, since he first, and then all the way through that, and then all the way down to today, with the Mandela effect of all things, and with this we haven't really heard, uh, being one of those things that as he was able to discover it, um, you know, the way people reacted to him uh, was that of, of gang stalking. He was being stalked because he saw something and he talked about something that they didn't want him to talk about or see, and then they targeted him after that, and and it does once you once you, that happens, there's no relenting. You're just it just goes on and on. And so, what I meant to tell people is, I mean, he's what 29 years old. So basically, you've got this 29 years of this, and I have 64 years of this. It never ends. People people say, "Well, has your stalking ended?" 
people people thought because I didn't talk about it that my that I thought it ended. I never said it ended. It never ends. What are you talking about? I never said that. You know, it's diminished because of the Lord Jesus Christ makes a way where there is no way. You know, there's that, and that's that's wonderful. Gives me peace in the eye of the storm. Yeah, that's wonderful. But uh, you know, it's it it never goes away because it never it it has no beginning and no end. There's not a single person on this earth that was claiming to be a target individual who's now free and in the clear. Oh, I know there's plenty that say it, but it doesn't exist. It's got nothing to do with a beginning or an end or a middle or whatever. It's got nothing to do with any of those concepts that we put on things. It's a nonlinear uh, issue. It's a multidimensional issue. It has nothing to do with when you're born, when it starts, when it stops. You may notice it, but uh, if you look carefully, you'll see that um, you are always targeted. You're always, you are always who you are. And who you are is not copacetic with who they are. Watching the whole satanic ritual of Barbara Bush. God, does that irritate you? I mean, is that an, <laughs> yeah, right? And all this, oh, glory, and all these people. And, they're, 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 you know, and look, take a good look at the Barbara Bush proceedings because there, there are your stalkers the entire group. Notice how Melania was there without Donald. You know where he was? He was at Mar-a-Lago watching it on TV. He just didn't want to go. He did not. He just didn't want to go because these people have been absolutely disgusting. The Bushes, he knows who the Bushes are. He knows what it's all about. He, he didn't go to let them know really very strongly you could be indicted Obama, you can be indicted, Clinton. You guys are eyeball deep in all this criminality. You guys absolutely are pure evil. And um, people say, well, no, that, t- that was a, a satanic ritual you saw. Well, no, no, yeah, maybe, but that's not the point. The point is when you watch them give their testimony and different things and say different things, um, you're looking at someone that looks on the surface absolutely innocent and sweet. Absolutely innocent and sweet people saying lovely things. And you know, you go, there's decorum, there's pomp and circumstance, there's respect. When the entire, the entire thing is a hoax. All of it. Because all of it owes its very power to this reality we speak of to the witchcraft to the when i say witchcraft i mean to the very ancient servant of satan type of thing that goes way far beyond uh even the fallen angels and these people are all beholden the sweetest most innocent girl up there giving her testimony about how nice barbara bush is or i saw one you know what i mean should be the one that puts the knife in your back uh, you, you're, you, you have no idea what you're looking at. Those people there that were all on the inside there, the insiders, maybe not all of them, but put it this way. They're all, uh, uh, you, you know, dancing to the tune of a different drummer than what you and I would perceive as being reality. <clears throat> and look at all this God stuff. God this and God that. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, George W. Bush is a man of God. He quit drinking. You know, it killed a million Iraqi kids. But, you know, who's counting? I mean, it's okay. It was just a time of war. And, you know, there were no weapons of mass destruction. They all knew it. 9-11, he's reading the goat book upside down. They all, yeah, they're all doing their part in this unfolding destiny. And there is no possible way that any of this is okay with God. This entire ceremony of uh, Mrs. Crowley, Ms. Crowley, uh, uh, you know, the, there's you know these rumors get started. And you oh, there's nothing to it. And the more I looked into it, the, you know, if the foo, I mean, shoe fits. Um, it, it, it's 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 it's. it's 
I don't understand how many days we've had this ritual going. It's been quite intense. It's more than Easter, more than, you know, I mean, more than, I don't recall anything going on like this, do you? And on and on and on. <laughs> it's going on this morning. Um, and and it, it's just, uh, it's, it's, you know, that is what you call society. That is your world. These are the movers and shakers. These are the leaders of your lovely world, okay? These are also the human trafficking people, the war trafficking. These are the people that, that uh, want to get back to life before Trump. Get back to the no interdicting on human, legalizing the pedophilia. You know, all the stuff. All the industries they're involved in, all the horrors befalling humanity, including uh, Hillary's, you know, war with Russia and the nukes and all, that, including just pain and torture for, you know, that's their 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 stock and trade. And there they all were, giving such glowing testimony about how what such a nice lady this is. And um, for those of us who understand what we're looking at, it's. Uh, it's absolutely, you wonder, you, you say to yourself, now, do these people really, really believe what they're saying about Barbara Bush? Are they just doing it because they're taking part in society and they want social mobility or maybe a better job or they're just playing the game? What do you think? In my opinion, they don't have any real choice. They're completely connected to it all and they owe they owe their very existence to this reality that is unspoken and unseen. And um, God help you if you discover it. If you're going along and, you know, you sort of live in the Truman Show and then, you know, you end up discovering there's this other world. God help you. Because the minute you see something, they will come after you. Just like in They Live, you know, it's just, you know, here's one who can see, and then they went after them. And, uh, you know, where are they from? Who are they? These are, uh, you know, these are on the other side. These are, you know, basically, you know, bought and paid for. These give cover to wars. To all kinds of nefarious stuff that we do, on, you know, nobody, there's no record of it. You know, killing millions of people, nobody bats an eye. You know, it's just stuff that goes on here, completely horrific and completely outrageous, completely beyond the pale. Nobody says a word. Nobody bats an eye. That's because <laughs> it's, it is the system. And people know that if they go up against the system, you know, they're going to go down. The system will remain. They're going to get crushed. So everybody keeps their mouths shut, hoping to get through another day when basically they live in a world of horror while the super elites, beholden to, you know, who they're beholden to, Beelzebub, whatever, they seem happy as can be to die. And as Bush Jr. said, to, she's going into the arms of a loving God. Okay, well, you know, most people know what I'm talking about, but they they basically, you know, and, and I and I understand the, the horror of it is so great that it with with someone with their eyes actually open, the odds on them getting through life without becoming mentally ill are about a thousand to one against them. You know, being consumed with paranoia or fear or something like that, something along those lines. Uh, it is impossible to look at without flipping out. It is impossible to look at it straight on. Yet, you know, all the, seemingly all the things that go on here have, are like beholden to it. And if anything is beholden to it, then it is uh, of death, not of life. Then it perishes, it doesn't thrive. Then it is evil, not good. And it's almost as if the world is this kind of, you know, hellhole that people fall into and they never get back out because they 
learn to abide in the system. Though it be a broken and corrupt system, they still profit by it, and so they kind of stay with it. They don't want to become a targeted individual that is targeted because they have raised their voice in objection to it. It's interesting, the observation that Rigo had about the big houses at Chino Hills and the poor Mexicans. Like, they couldn't own those houses, these fancy houses, and then there's all kinds of fancy people there, and yet they were the ones owning owning the whole thing. I'm like, yeah, well, you see, that's basically L.A. You know, people don't understand. And I'm 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 completely serious when I say something like, you know, the maids run the place. Uh, I'm not being facetious. I've said that years ago, and I wound I found that being spoken on uh, above top secret. They had a little blog there. Someone mentioned you know the the thing. I they didn't attribute me with it, but I mean I, it came from me. But I mean this idea that the maids run the place. I mean that's that's uh, in my book Glass Backwards. I. Um, I got into that. I actually had a sacrificial ritual going on at the L.A. Coliseum, all run by the witches, <laughs> by the maids. Yeah. And people were cheering it on, you know. It's like it was all, you know, you can imagine security around so no one could, no one could see what was going on in there. And, and I'm just, you know, it's just fantasy, you know. But, I mean, I'm just developing, showing, explaining uh, what this is. See, the problem that you have targeted individuals is this it's the entire world that you were born into the problem is you were born into it is the problem you will never ever ever get out of you know you say being targeted it's not that you're targeted it's that you're not the same thing as what's here see what i mean it's just and that's what causes the 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 blowback most people that say they've been targeted also have the same experience as Rigo. It started a lot longer ago than where they really started noticing it. You know, when they went back through their memories and through time, they realized, oh, this has been going on a lot longer than when I said it began, because it looks like there's always been a problem, indeed. It's their job to keep it concealed, though, and if they do spill the beans, they get uh, hurt very badly. So they can't talk. That's why they dropped Rigo at, at times. They said, I can't talk anymore. I'm not in the Bible. I don't have, I know what you're talking about. Please leave me alone. Because they're worried about being hurt themselves. That's why they did that to him. Meaning making him feel like he's some hot potato, uh, totally radioactive, and uh, even almost like he's somehow a danger to them. Like they can't be seen with him. Because they might get in trouble. Well, who's the punisher? Huh? Who's the punisher? Who is the punisher? I remember I told you about the guy at uh, the World Wide Web store. This guy opened up a retail store. You could walk in and get a website. That's how we got the Zeff report. Guy that worked there, I, I knew he, was, he went to church I said, well, let's pray. And, and he goes, I, I can't. Why? Because they can hear me. And I, I just, I don't want to get in trouble praying with you, okay? If I pray with you, I'm going to get in trouble. So I felt just like Rigo. See? Only that this chap, he gave me a little bit more information, thank God. Uh, but you know, you're, you're, you're in it. You're, you know, you're, you're in it. And you know, their goal, and this is what's so stupid about them. The goal is to wipe everybody out. That's not like them. If they even get close to succeeding, they will be nuked off the face of the earth and be as if they never were to begin with. They will end up having no history and no footprint and never having been here. If they succeed, it's complete self-annihilation. God will not sustain a world that is them and not you. He will sustain a world that is you and not them, or a sufficient number of you. But he will not sustain, and my logic comes from the Sodom and Gomorrah story. You can read about it in the Bible. Uh, My logic comes from that, and it's almost like a mathematical formula. 
You know, the town Sodom and Gomorrah wasn't just about sodomy. Everybody says, oh, it's all about sex. It's all about poking people in the anus and all that. And it's, it's, uh, it's all about wickedness. You know, murder, black magic, ritual abuse of children, raping angels. Uh huh. There's just, in other words, it's gone. So what happens when when there's no righteous there? God nukes it. It, it, it. Fire from above destroys it in about two seconds, and the people are as if they never were. If they get rid of the people of God or the people they say, well, you're resisting, it's like, no, they're just made the way they're made. Sorry, but, you know, different species. Okay, there's, we don't like to talk about that. They don't even like to talk about the whole blood type issue because they don't want you to know that there are different delineations of people, of things. They don't want you to know anything about anything. They want you to remain ignorant. Now, some of the wiser ones realize they have to keep some lambs around in order to continue whatever they're doing. Most don't understand that. Okay, I need that stopped. We'll go to another song. Guys, come on, guys. You can't bark. You can't bark. Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, so that about wraps it up with that. I mean, I don't, you know, I'm not trying to make the whole Bush family of, an issue here. It's just that, you know, the, the, it, it, after a while, I just started thinking, well, how long is this thing going on? And, and they're, they're going so over the top. It's, it's, th- this is more accolades than God gets, you know. This is ridiculous. You know, that she dies, that, you know, it's, I don't recall people just fawning over her through her life. I don't, you know, recall it's, this is another, what weird Mandela effect thing. It's, it's just like a different, you know, uh, different contextual uh, dimension that uh, where Barbara Bush's lion eyes for, you know, almost like a week. Really? I, I don't know who else gets that kind of treatment, but what the, what, who the hell is she then? Well, you know, that, that goes in favor of, you know, that, that, that there's something else going on here, something very big. And um, so, look, thank God you are who you are. I am sorry it's so uncomfortable. You know, I'm sorry for all the uh, poisonings, murder attempts, breaking into your house, following you with a camera, you know, trying to run you over with a car. I am sorry that it's that bad. That you didn't do anything to deserve that. All you did is you woke up and you saw something that they didn't want you to see, and it's been holy hell from that point on forward. And I am sorry. It is so unfair, and it is so horrible, and it's going to have to be settled one of these days. You know that, right? But how can you tell who the enemy is? It seems that all your friends or people you trust, all of a sudden they betray you. That's because it's, they're not really them anymore. You see what I mean? There's a point where they cease to become the people that you thought you knew. Oh, they're there. There's something there, but they're not people. And that's the other thing that people have a hard time getting their minds around because it's very difficult to know when they are people and when they are not people. There are times when they are not people. The technology they have is just that good, folks. And they can, they can, they can simulate any kind of reality Anywhere with anyone at any time with a push of a button or with a, <laughs> with a wave of a wand. So you live in basically a nightmare, okay? Your parents, your children, your friends don't know that. But you know that. The question you have to ask is, are they in or are they out? Who are they? Do I really have friends? Are they really my friends? Or will they, will they betray me like everything else has in this life? So the solution to it all is God. 
you know, the solution to all of it is God. God is how I survived when I didn't know what the hell it was. All I knew is that there was one trap after another set. And they really wanted me there, but something interrupted it. The same thing that the late Tom Buchan, that we had discussions, same thing happened to him. And uh, it might not be a, an appointment with death. It could be an appointment with uh, people very, very interested in, in moving you over a certain line. Taking you away from God, in other words, through initiating you into another world. And so all of the targeting eventually goes to that little factoid that there's a world that needs to be initiated into through free will and they're everywhere trying to get you, desperately trying to get you in. Because, you see, that's the only way they can live. It's a big Ponzi scheme. A Ponzi scheme of souls. And I have tried my best to help people understand that when you're here on earth, you're expected, God expects you to fight the good fight of faith. Pick up the entire armor of God, you know, find out what the truth is and serve that. And that's the only way to, to beat this thing. You cannot beat this thing through fighting with flesh and blood or trying to find out who the perps are. Most, a lot of these perps aren't even people. Some are, some are holographic, some are people, some are like almost clones. But one thing for sure, the dimensions keep shifting, so you never know where you are. What movie said it is? It looks like L.A., but then it's not, you know. The guy I knew would never say that I'm, I'm you know, I'm, now I'm done with the Bible. Please leave me alone. That's somebody else, but looks exactly the same as my friend, going from what Rigo said yesterday. Yes, that's how it works. You see, your reality is shifting every day. The people that you think you know are also shifting every day. People you think are your parents are shifting every day. Everything is shifting and sifting like sifting sands and like quicksand. Nothing can be taken for granted. Nothing is the same as it was the day before. We are all basically here, and if we are still here, it's by the grace of the living God. It's by God's intervention hand that we are able to continue on for his purpose. There, what's my purpose? I, well, I don't know about any purpose that I have. I just, I'm just here. I'm just me. Okay, so is there a purpose? Well, God has a purpose, so I'm going to just try to align with that. You know what I mean? And then that would be the purpose for my life. There really isn't anything that I can come up with like, you know, I used to think, well, I'll surf the world. You know, I'll surf all over the world. And then, you know, as I got older, then it was like, now nah, that, that desire sort of went, I'll do this, I'll do that. You know, I'll, I'll um, you know, I'm going to live in a certain kind of place and I'm going to have a certain kind of thing and I'm going to get a certain thing. And when I started to understand time, space, and entropy, I started to understand that all these little plan, plans of mine are foolish and silly. So I quit making plans. I quit having those kind of a dream of some material life because the thing that people do is they have a dream of a material achievement, not factoring in the fact that once it's achieved, the clock still ticks, right? It, it just fades out. <laughs> If they knew it was going to fade out, they probably wouldn't pr pr pursue it. But, you know, God has a way of having us pursue things that we think are our own thing, but end up being a thing for him. So there's that saving grace as well. So anyway, you know, uh, I just wanted to give my comments on the Rigo situation. I'm, I'm very, this man is very articulate and um, in recollecting, you know what I mean? It's just a good thing we have it down on tape, but... I know there's probably a few hours of material that he left out. He tried to condense it all. So there's many more incidents. I just don't, I think we would have had incident fatigue had we gone on with more and more incidents of what he was saying, more examples or more, more, uh, you know, more examples of the same thing over and over again. Suffice to say that people know about all this and they try to keep their head down and they try to, but then the world pisses them off 
you know what I mean? And then, but then they don't can't make a wave in the world because then then they got to deal with this again. And so it's just people feel stuck, they feel enslaved, they feel unappreciated, they feel unwanted, they feel targeted, they feel bitter, they feel angry. Every you know, it's just like why even be born here? You know, there and they, they there's all all that contained within you know the life upon this uh, you know this sinking ship here. And, um, you know, that, that can't be, uh, we look for blame, you know, we look, we look for blame and, uh, we don't often find a place to, you know, a way to blame a person to blame. I mean, I can't, I can't really, you know, going back to the funeral, I'm not blaming Barbara Bush or the Bush family or Obama. Oh, I see the Obamas were there and the Clintons. Perfect. They had to be there. They're all connected with, you know, Bush and Bush Jr. They're, they're all three peas in a pod. And, you know, but it's, I can't blame them. They're just the latest thing that's come down the pike that implements. And, uh, you know, they'll be gone pretty soon. So where's the blame? Who's orchestrating all this crap? Who, who wants humanity to be miserable and in war in tatters and, and diseased and starving? Who wants that? I don't. But somebody does. And so we see the elites who are keeping the flame of poverty and destruction and evil and and perversion and uh, all manner of evil things. We see the powers that be doing this horrible thing. Having sold out to that reality to so to be taken care of to to be somebody, to be a mover and shaker, causing trouble and evil and travail in the world, but having everyone lionize them as if they are this savior from uh, you know the, uh, the 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 whatever the uh, the healing savior of of light. When in actuality, they all have to participate, you know, in the bombing in the. In this, that, in whatever it is, the DU poisoning, the whatever they, 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 they come as the savior, but they really are here doing the work of Satan. Human trafficking, child trafficking, sex trafficking, slavery, uh, misery, poverty, disease, Haiti. Haiti is a great example. But the Clintons were well welcomed there. Well rewarded for Haiti. Haiti, they did a good job. The sin would be to give the Haitians a way for prosperity, a way for them to, to, to come up in uh, economy and in, uh, in whatever thing they would come up in. I mean, whatever industry, whatever, whatever thing they would produce. To give the Haitians a, a path forward would be the biggest sin of the world. To bring prosperity back to America would be the biggest sin of all time. To have the world not at war would be the biggest sin of all time. To eradicate disease and suffering and, and struggle from the world's population would be the biggest, the biggest, most evil thing that could ever happen of all time. And the, the leaders of all of this want to keep that status quo in place. Anyone who upsets the apple cart in any way will be found guilty and punished accordingly. Anyone who says anything about this other world as if they know something about it or characterize it in any way, shape, or form that is negative will also themselves be forever in the crosshairs. There is zero tolerance for any objection to the world system as it is today, and zero tolerance to anyone who would seek to change it in any way, shape, or form. And that is the problem. I'm going from the targeted individual now to the overall giant problem of, of it's, not even a, it's not even the curse of humanity. It's way bigger than that. And no, there is no solution of man. 
And most people, sheeple, whatever, they look at the Fox News and the Barbara Bush proceedings and, you know, whatever other proceedings and they, they, the Mueller proceedings or this proceeding, that proceeding, and they just take it all in stride like it's all normal. You could have the devil running around killing people at the ceremony and they probably wouldn't bat an eye either. You know, they just, this is just the way it is. It's just ridiculous. And uh, so the question then becomes, you know, what do we do? Well, one of the things that's happening, I mean, this small front, but the the communist problem, I thought I would mention this. At some point, it's going to have to be dealt with. That means war, of course. And uh, so I hope, you know, you guys understand a communist regime globally is a totalitarian a regime based on depopulation, poverty, and um, you know, disease of and 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 uh, you know, uh, you know, just just any and all evil of of you know humanity. It's it's basically the thing humanity has feared. It's the movie Elysium. You know, it's it's the people that live in squalor versus the people that have escaped with the life extension technologies and. They're going off to the moon and the sun and the stars and off into adventure where these people are being left behind and, you know, and, and basically dying and, you know, squalor, disease and, and, and filth. And, you know, it seems that, but what Satan wants to do, you know, with his world, and this is all basically run by Satan, the whole point is to turn it into that kind of hellhole. And to turn it into a, a global Haiti, let's say, or some third world country or some banana republic. And, uh, you know, they've practically turned the United States into that as it is right now. Uh, and after watching this uh, pomp and circumstance of Barbara Bush, I mean, I'm just absolutely, I don't see how people could stand that, you know, be to be insulted on that level to have that rubbed in their faces, to have their noses rubbed in that. I I would think people would object. But, you know, I shouldn't hope for too much. I guess I just should have no expectation whatsoever of people here. But Trump had represented a pushing back on, on this satanic um, program. And you see what they've they've tried to do to him. Now, I'm, I'm ambivalent. I'm, I'm kind of you know, agreeing with his ex-wife, Ivana, that maybe he should step down because, you know, he's getting up there in, in, in years, I mean, maybe after the, the term is over, cut a deal with everyone to leave him alone, that he'll leave after, he won't seek re-election, and they'll back off because this is all about, you know, what this is about. It's about the same thing Rigo was talking about, okay, only on a, big, a much bigger scale. And uh, so they keep coming at you, you know, they, they're going to keep a- after it and then keep suing, they'll keep, they, they will never stop, you know what I mean? These people are just, I don't know, they love hell, they, you know, they're all, they're all basically dead. None of them matter. Just like if you go to war with a communist, did you really kill anybody? If you like, if you kill swaths of hundreds of thousands of them, did you kill anyone? I don't know. But if if they get in power, they will kill you. They will kill anything and everyone that they perceive to be not completely down with the program, which would be anybody over thirty eventually. You know, so it's it's very very evil. Uh, communism is the manifestation of Satan in a political body upon the earth. It is there to 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 you know because Satan can't just go kill people because God has a say in all this. You know what I mean? In other words, He keeps people alive. Satan would like to eradicate the earth of most, probably all people, because Satan hates people. Because of, because people are the the you know are part of the. It's all a part and parcel of this ultimate creation of God, which is is creating the the uh, the the man where God will dwell as the throne of God dwelling in man. I mean, that's the ultimate pinnacle of creation that is coming, that is uh, that is in process, and that's what Satan's trying to stop. Okay, so, you know, Trump has is, is made some very egregious uh, errors in that, you know, uh, basically, but the opposition against Trump, of course, they will all vote for the opposition. That just shows how far they, they vote for 
um, uh, what are the, the the Democrats are really the Communist Party now? What do they kind of stand for? They stand for no prosperity whatsoever, uh, tax hikes, uh, return to human trafficking, legalizing pedophilia. Uh, you know um, the the you know massive regulation, strangling companies. You know, just basically bringing things to a standstill, and you know having an enforced uh, poverty. Okay, and calling it progress, of course. Uh, still, despite that, and then the Republican would be, I guess the Trump Republican would be for prosperity, trade deals, peace, uh, peace through strength, uh, trade deals, uh, border security, um, ed- ed- expansion, advancement of economies. In other words, you know, what people don't understand is we're getting a tremendous advancement in our economy right now. And what they say is, oh, that trickle down isn't working. Who believes that? It's expanding to the point where we need we need to import labor at this at, at an almost an alarming rate. We're expanding. The coffers are expanding. The money coming into the uh, the infrastructure for the infrastructure into the coffers of of the United States is is going is rising and rising and rising. Record record num- amounts of revenue, and uh, it's just a whole different ball game. Okay, that's they're trying to convince people, and they do a very good job of it. That we need. We need to go back to the way it was and stop all this. And there's a good number of people, apparently, that will be voting in the midterms who want to make sure we stop all this and they want to go back to, um, you know, the squalor or whatever they were living in. And they're, they're actually going to vote for that. They actually are going to vote to stop expanding economic, to stop... Uh, expanding with medical cures to stop, you know, to stop it, to stop any anything like that, and especially to stop the peace process. What's the peace process? You learn anything here? It's the it's the fair trade process, right? They especially want to stop any kind of peace with North Korea, anything like that. They must they must stop and go back to the old satanic way, and the people vote for it. The people will vote, you know, against Trump and for all the negative things they were complaining about. And then they will complain again after they get what they got and they'll bl- even blame it on Trump where the Democrats will be seen as the saviors as they bring in the squalor, turn off the water, turn off the resources, turn, you know, manage the decline. And because I've seen that, up close and personal, you know, the last couple of months, especially that I've seen that there is a good deal of people who will create a blue wave that will make sure Trump cannot advance any agenda whatsoever, that his, basically, his term is over at the midterms. Uh, At that point, I pretty much walk away. You know what I mean? I'm, uh, but, but, but see, it's the age old lesson. The people... You see, it's the people. The government is a reflection of those people. And at that point, if, it, if it's going to be that way, I, I, have to, I have to withdraw because there's nothing I can do if the people's will is degradation and destruction, then that's, that's their will. Nothing I can do about it. That's what they want. And, uh, you know, they, they, feel, they feel so militant going up against anybody who's traditional. Well, that's fine. Let them just have the whole thing. I, I don't care. I mean, if, they, if they're not, you know, if they don't want to save themselves, if they don't want to improve their lives, they want to live in squalor, they, they don't want anyone to have anything, they want everyone to just be told what to do, that is, uh, you know, it's not me. Because, see, I, I, I'm with the Lord. You know, he tells me. They don't tell me anything. But at that point, I, uh, I'm done with any kind of... There's no point in me talking about politics or anything else. At that point, it's so rigged that, that I would almost agree with the people saying, well, you see, it's screwed. You're never going to get out. No, it's like, well, no, I am going to get out of it. I'm going to do what the Lord and how the Lord and, you know, moves me to do. I'm going to try to not come up with my own conclusions about everything, and I don't. You know, I'm trying not to be wise in my own understanding. But uh, there's a certain point, though, where um, God is revealing something to us, and he's wanting us to understand, I guess, the level of human de- depravity, to the, that a human being would actually vote to destroy himself, thinking he's actually improving his life. 
And there's not much you can do when you have people like that are on that level. There's not much you can do. You just live in a bad country, that's all. You live in a country where people are very uneducated, very ignorant, and they can't see the forest for the trees, and they just kind of, they're like automatons, they just do what they're told. And this is the picture that Rigo was painting. This is the picture that, you know, that we, we look at the, the world of, uh, the, the, the Bible, you know, portrays. We look at the world as we see it. And we see that people really, you know, like what Aldous Huxley said, they, they, they seem to love their servitude. And, and I might add to Mr. Huxley here, they love squalor and they love living off somebody else's crumbs and they love, you know, these, these scraps from the table, and they hate having their own. And I don't know, I, this is just something I have to adjust to. You know, they, they, they like disease. Some of these people actually give themselves diseases, or they try to cripple themselves because they want to identify with someone in a wheelchair or something. There's a, it, it actually goes that far. And no one's ever put them in a mental hospital or had them have counseling. They, uh, it's, it's all considered perfectly normal. Not much I can do with that. And if all the children are indoctrinated, now they want the vote to be at 16 years old. And, and the kids by that time are so completely indoctrinated, they just want to, you know, they want to grab your guns, they want to take away your economy, they want to take your private property, they, want, they just want to put you in some sort of concentration camp at that point. Uh, all under the color of law and all basically run by the Democrats. The Democrats run the show. The witches run the show. Uh, and, and, you know, and, and those policies that they have, which are, you know, the globalist, communist, whatever policies, lead to authoritarianism, totalitarianism, you know, death to people that don't agree, whatever. Uh, mass death, mass squalor, mass, mass, uh, uh, you know, horrors for, for humans. But the people want it. You see, this is what we're, that's why I'm thinking about Trump and I'm thinking, man, he doesn't need this. You know what I mean? The people have let him down. I mean, look what happened when he was doing his, his, uh, his moves on, uh, you know, and, 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 and the whole Syria, wag the dog, Syria. He, they wagged the dog and he wagged it right back. But he, he wasn't understood. And this whole thing happened and the base got badly splintered uh, by the leaders in talk show that said they understood all this and then they acted like they didn't. And so, you know, now at this point, after that happened, which kind of guarantees no 2020, you know, uh, I've, I think what has to happen at this point is, is we've got to think, you know, you're going to be, what, 74 years old, right? You know, well, the guy's, you know, very entitled to, you know, he's proven that no man can do anything, you know. It's the, the, the people are just absolutely not worth it, you know. So uh, if he went off and had his life and played golf and, I don't know. I mean, I don't see him being that kind of person that, that would be able to just walk away knowing that he didn't do everything he could to help. But um, talk about the lack of appreciation. It's just stunning. The lack of acknowledgement, the lack of respect. It's just, it's just so thick. I, I was thinking yesterday, when I was watching the, the telly, and, and I was thinking about kids watching this and, and what, what do the kids think about the way they're behaving that the Stormy Daniels and the lawsuits and all the stuff and then look no further than in a textbook where we see Donald Trump being called a racist and kids are studying that in school and I'm just like uh, at this point I, I, I just you know the Marxism has to go folks see we can't be pussies anymore you know we have to actually stand up to it. And that's the cultural Marxists, the Marxists, you know, the basic Marxists around the world. Uh, communism must be defeated in a, in, a, in a theater of war. There is no other way. They will not relent. The only thing they understand is war, you know, is force. So, you know, I don't know when, but it, it's like there's no point in even being outraged about it. It's It's something that, must and has to happen. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm not a warmonger. I am um, just, just practical. The two systems 
cannot coexist. We cannot coexist uh, with freedom and communism in the same place. Free markets, capitalism, and communism do not coexist together. One must wipe out the other. You know, there must be a decision one way or the other. For the capitalist, it means, yeah, you can have pick up arms. You know, well, I'm killing your own country. No, it's it's not just your country. It's it's a it's a it's a divide. Like when people go to war over things, that's just one of those divides. It's what kind of life will be in the future. Will it be a future of freedom, or will it be a future of, you know, authoritarianism? You know, no freedom, <laughs> no no uh, uh, no freedom, no prosperity, no uh, freedom of speech, no bill of rights, no no, no nothing. Just basically the, you know, they'll tell you you're free at the end of a gun. You disagree with anything they say, it's off with your head. You know, it's just basically back to the same old uh, enslavement as the world's always been in. But if people want to be free. There's at some point this communism has to be this 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 has to be settled one way or the other. You know, and um, I don't know what form it would take. I did have a vision of war where I saw. Plane, big planes, you know, like jets and things, you know, flying sorties in America. Uh, I guess I was looking at a civil war would be the communists versus the capitalists, and there, there's there's all the military is involved as well. And it's just this horrific, you know, just everything is just bombed to smithereens, you know, and it looks like Syria, like Damascus, you know. It just looks, you know, completely gone. So that's another thing that's out there. And, um, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm not sour on society. Just that after yesterday's talk, you know, you, you see how vast all this is. Getting back to, to Rigo's situation, he's just, he's a, he's a guy, he's a worker bee. He's a guy that works. He works at jobs. You know, he has skills. He has a skill set. He can take care of himself. He's uh, he got training. He's got, you know, some education. He's got some some way of making a living here, or making a way here in the world. And uh, a lot of that has been interrupted by this, you know, by this this hor- horrible overarching other reality that has crept into his basic reality of this life. Just trying to have a you know a girlfriend and a, or a wife and you know a job and you know continue down the road. It seems like that's been every all but impossible because of the targeting that he has actually suffered, you know, from the witchcraft, from you know the the uh, the, the Mandela uh, blowback of having seen Mandela effects or whatever, and uh, the people in his life that were act one way then another, and then so it's becoming a very unstable environment, you know. So it's very hard to, to forge ahead with a job and family and 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 those kind of commitments when you see that the entire thing is fake, when it's, the whole thing is revealed as the Truman Show, the entire thing is being manipulated like by puppet strings. And even a lot of the people in your life aren't even people, aren't even there. You think they're there, but they're not even there. They're just props in somebody else's play. So what do we do with that? So that then, you know, that then brings the whole battle back to the spiritual battle to God. I mean, you know, communism would be antichrist, right? And and freedom or free markets would be, uh, hence freedom would be Christ, right? Freedom versus slavery. But, you know, if, if that's the way the war goes, if it actually becomes against the communists, I wouldn't be surprised. But it just seems like at some point we're going to be in some kind of war with something, uh, I'm very happy to see Donald Trump go on with this North Korea situation. Um, I'm sorry that, you know, the base got so badly splintered on that Friday night. I, I think, you know, some of those people have obviously seen the light and have kind of uh, come back into the fold of, of just being a person that wants to see certain changes, you know, to try to, to make the world tolerable, and a better place for their children. That's what we're talking about. Better quality of life for themselves, for their children, you know, and, and, and a return to the respectful things of our society that we had before. Now it's this fiasco that's 
it just seems like it's 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 spiraling out of control right now. And and it it's just so bad. The divide is so stark. And the lawsuits and are piling up like you you can't believe. And just the it just this you know it just seems it's got to be settled in a war at some point. Or something. Something has to settle it. Because I don't believe the country can go on split as it is. Uh, it, it's, it makes it difficult. Now, can he go on with North Korea and some of the, some of the other things he's doing? Yeah, of course he, he can go on. But I mean, it's, it's, it's every single thing is child, every single thing is hated. The only thing they want is squalor, poverty, uh, regulations, um, just misery. You know, that's basically, and the people, they got enough people to vote for it. I mean, that's the most incredible thing. So, just a heads up on that front. I mean, my, my opinion of it is that, uh, you know, that, that uh, Trump will continue to turn in a, a great performance, and, you know, as he did in, in Syria, slapping McCain back. And then, of course, Nikki Haley got caught in the crossfire, and then people say, well, she's anti-Trump now. She's not anti-Trump. She's not anti-Trump. She, she's a neocon. And he kind of bitch slapped the neocons by giving it, giving their medicine right back to them. You know, he did. He met a wag the dog with a wag the dog. He met a false flag with a false flag. His attack on Syria was a false flag, and Alex Jones didn't understand. That's scary. That's really scary. Who's Alex working for? Right? I mean, how does that happen? And it doesn't happen. You know, so I don't know, folks. I just, I just guess the, the the main thing is I have to gauge how many people there are, uh, you know, for freedom versus how many f- people there are for um, for slavery. And, and it's amazing that I have to even say that, but I mean that's what it really comes down to. As far as the legacy of the whole, the Bushes and their and their you know, affinity for Nazis. <laughs> I mean, God, man, you, you can't be serious. You can't, then, oh, yeah, we like it like this. We likey, likey, likey. Hey, what happened to uh, the QAnon thing? Is that still going? Uh, I'm sorry, I haven't kept up with it. So I, I, I just, there's, there's nothing I can, I was reporting on it as I kept up with it. Uh, it just looked to me like he was sort of mimicking the news and making little predictions of, you know, this is this and that's that, this is what it really is, et cetera. You know what I mean? There wasn't no, no big grand new, new, uh, mythology that you can, you know, the, the, uh, there's <laughs> gone is that whole Mueller thing. <laughs> you know, Jeff Sessions going to come up to the, he's got a secret plan. You know, all that's gone and none of that happened and all that, you know, hit the wall, but they've stayed with him, you know, and they stayed with, and, and Alex, uh, it, it, Alex Jones is the, is the location of Q, but I haven't been able to follow it because I haven't followed any more info wars or anything like that because of, um, I was just worried that I wouldn't be uh, getting accurate information anymore. By just seems kind of over for Infowars in a way, you know. I'm, not, over, I don't know. It's just it's like a it's a spiritual thing. It's it's like an over thing, you know. It may be just over for me, but it's it's like it's uh, it's just another news source. I'm not anti Infowars. Like I, if I see an article pop up, I read it. You know what I mean? If it's helpful to me, it's helpful, but. I don't really seek it. I don't seek any news outlet. I think they're all, all the news outlets are equally over for me. And um, Roger Stone seems a little, you know, over for me too. And, uh, you know, Trump in a way, like I say, he's done a tremendous performance, but he's not really appreciated here. You know what I mean? I appreciate him. You appreciate him. You guys that, that that have been working on the human trafficking, you never had a better advocate about the human trafficking and this, the perversions of the swamp. But, I mean, it's doubtful the swamp is really going to be drained without... It, it just seems to me at this point, 
why kill yourself over it? You know, if you're Trump, you know, why not just, I mean, I don't think he knew what he was getting into. Okay. I, I, I didn't know what he was getting into. I had no idea it was as bad as it is. I, it's bad. I had no idea the deep state was as, 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 you know, is basically the satanic cabal, you know, the, the kings and queens of the other world that have, that have, you know, their royalty there, so they have royalty here. I had no idea it was so rigged. I, you know, and, and I almost say to you, you know, and I don't want to be, you know, encourage anyone to commit suicide, nothing like that, you know, because your life is precious. You know, you've got to, you are very special to the Lord, okay? I mean, you are the antidote to this. You realize that. You, your spirit, your life is the antidote to this situation. You and I will never really be welcome at the Bush table. Not that it matters. But I don't think you're going to be welcome at that table. Uh, Bush representing the old America, you know, America that was before. I mean, it's almost like you could go tear at the fabric of all these secret societies and a Masonic organization just say, well, we got nothing. (laughs) Yeah, it looks like it got something. We got a whole lot of evil going on, but there's nothing here to report. Nothing here to report, Lord. There's nothing really here to report. You know, nothing really here. Us witnesses are looking around and we don't see anything. You say you want something good to report. What good? Something good. Let's report something good. Well, here's what's good. When people, you know, lay their life down for their friends, Jesus, sacrifice for somebody else, put somebody else ahead of them, uh, aren't so selfish. Yeah, those are all great victories. But uh, and, and maybe that's what this whole place is for, to learn all that stuff. But in terms of the of the global production of a nation, a people, an achievement, I'm not so sure. I, I'm watching. I'm not really going to say it's not possible. But it seems the more we go toward globalism, the more we simply go toward slavery and totalitarianism and uh, intolerance and, you know, just basically no plurality of ideas and, you know, censorship and, and Google and Facebook and the rest of the nightmares out there. It just seems to be nothing really worthy of reporting. Whereas before the election, I think I had a lot more optimism. You know, now at this point, it's not that I don't have optimism as an individual. I, I, I certainly do. Um, you know, I feel like I'm taking part in a play. I don't really take it seriously anymore. You know what I mean? It's kind of, to me, it's like a, being in a play, right, in school. And, you know, you know, we're all doing our part. Uh, but ultimately, I know it's not my home. My home is elsewhere, you know, and I'm going to be going there afterwards. So I want to do everything I can do that the Lord will want me to do or find out what God's will is, you know, is there a purpose for me and try to fulfill that. Uh, to the best I can, and, you know, usually that involves not being so selfish, (laughs) because what's the point, you know, here, uh, we, uh, you you can't take it with you anyway, so what's the point, you know, you you might as well be kind to other people, because what's, what are you going to cover, you know, cover, cover something, you know, I've got this elite status, you can't look at me, you must apologize, Uh, all that stuff that's going on, can you believe, I mean, it's just, it's such a sick joke. I would like to find some good things to report on here. We have a we have some in our own lives. Uh, Asher, update on Asher. Asher, uh, the the boy that was enslaved, the six year old that was enslaved in a kiln in Pakistan and treated horribly. And and I don't have a medical update, but he was rescued. And uh, you know they were trying to haggle around on the price. They were. They were doing what I thought they were doing. They were like, well, maybe, you know, he's worth a lot more than that. They were trying to start haggling and stuff, and that was making me really nervous. But now that it's accomplished, that he is uh, free, now it's a matter of recovery. It's going to, you know, Jesus is going to have to work with them and with a loving with a loving family of, of, uh, of the uh, orphanage and everything to really try to... Um... <laughs> <laughs> 
bring him up. I mean, see, what he's going to learn right away is there are these evil Muslims out there who kill you just as soon as look at you, who rape kids just for fun. And so he's going to have to come to terms with all that very early in life compared to us, say, say here in the United States. Uh, and but But Jesus can fill the heart with love. And I suppose that's really, you know, when I look at people, you say, well, what's good here? I've seen people who are just like totally awesome, loving, delivered. They're not even, they're not being affected by all this in the way that a lot of people are, you know, they're not, they haven't bought into it. They're not, they're not mad at it. They're just like in the state of grace, the state of peace, the state of uh, love. And it's, they, they've, they're fully engaged and aware of the wars that go on. And the fact we have spiritual wars all over the place we have to deal with. But they're doing it in a way that, you know, they're not bitter. They're like children. I think that's a great achievement. They're not world weary. They haven't been beaten down. They're excited about life. They're excited about things and ideas. Like, I was very excited yesterday to talk about all this stuff. It's fascinating, the level of technology involved. And, you know, even having people that aren't there show up in your life. And they're not even people. I mean, this is amazing to me. Not that they were switched, but that they aren't even there. <laughs> I've had that happen several times, by the way. I didn't have a frame of reference of what to call it. But I've had that happen to me several times where there are people that weren't even there. And then, and then when you finally catch up with those original people, they have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> It's like, oh my God, can you believe that manipulation reality they did just to get me? What they want to do? They want to ruin my day, make me feel paranoid, make me run home and hide under, under, the, under the mattress. Is that what they wanted? Well, of course it is. They want me to be a shut-in. They don't want me to go anywhere because they don't want me to, to, to tell somebody something else, which, by the way, is it Rosemary's Baby where they all know anyway? It's one big satanic story. Everybody's in on it, right? You know, the baker, the dentist, the... They've all played footsie with the devil. And when it comes to the hive mind, they're all going to participate. And if you're the target, they're going to have to go against you. Because why? They don't want their life hurt. So, better you than me, they'll say. Jeez, man. And so the kids go to school like me when I went to school. And nobody told me about any of this. I had to find out the hard way. Some kids were told about it, but they were told about it like this. Uh, you know, dad puts a gun to your head and says, you will comply, son. You know what I mean? Or I'll blow your head off. I mean, that's how they found out about it. <laughs> uh, you know, y yeah. You see, there's this. So how can we live knowing the way it is? How can we live? How can Rigo have a, a, be a householder? You know, job, wife, child. Uh, situation, social life, whatever. How can he? Well, the answer is, of course, he cannot have a normal situation like that ever again, probably. None of us can. Because we are hyper aware that the real world isn't this one. It's the one that's operating uh, through this one and making changes in this one and making edits in this one that are seemingly at random and affect all of our lives. And, and so we never can, can sit down and say, you know what? Here, I've got a stable position here. No, none of us is stable. Anything can happen at any time. And who's to blame? The communist? No. You know, these are people that are just weak-minded people that just went over, right? Cut a deal because they thought they'd they get something out of it. The uh, Patriots, no. The scientists at CERN, the chemtrail uh, pilots, no. Uh, the nuclear scientists, the, um, the RAND Corporation, I mean, who is responsible for all this? Where can I go for redress? And the answer is God. God. God allows it to be for his purposes, and even if you don't know what those purposes are, that's the only place we can go for redress. And by the way, I'm in there about every night. Lord, why this? Lord, help me to understand this. Lord, please, I don't think I can make it another day. Lord, I can't see anymore. My, my, my eyes have seen too many things. 
too much evil. We see evil on fa- people getting beheaded on Facebook. I mean, you know, it's I've seen too many evil, awful things. You know, where is their peace? And um, anyway, uh, God bless you, each and every one of you. I uh, may be back again, roving reporter. Um, I will be following up with Rigo again in another interview because there's more, he has more to say. And we kind of cut it right there because it was two hours and you know what I mean? We had to, you know, an hour, hour and a half at that point. And we couldn't, I, I couldn't absorb anymore. I just had to stop there and then think about what was said and then move on because coming from him, even though I've been through all the exact same things, it described them a little differently, but it's, it's, it's with him, it's fresh. It's happening, you know, unfolding as we speak. So I think there's uh, definitely, um, you know, I think it definitely bears fruit. I think it'll make a, a lot of you guys out there feel a lot more comfortable you know, if you can, knowing that the world is just isn't going to be what you thought it was, what you were taught it was. So you can help, it helps you to adjust to the way it really is, which is don't take anything for granted. You know, anytime you find love and kindness, that's a real, real commodity. That's a real gift. And anytime you can give love and kindness, that's a real gift that you can give it. I mean, in this world, we're, we're not supposed to have any love and kindness in this world. So I think that's that's another thing to keep in mind. But, I mean, it's pretty scary. You know, I'm, I'm sure what we talked about yesterday was scary. What's even scarier is how many people understand or even participate in it on the other side, thinking they're going to get somewhere in life. Right? Okay. I'll see you, ne- I'll see you next time. I'll see you next time. And th- that could be today since it's a Sunday. We might have another two for today. Maybe we'll get Frankie going. Well, I don't know what will happen, but... It's we're it's it's we're we're on the you know we're on the precipice here